Um, interesting documentary coming out about the Patriots. Uh, think Last Dance, I guess. Not so much in the content, but that type of thing. Rob G, kind of, it's not all out. It just dropped today, right? The first episode. So bring us up to speed. So what are it. they doing, Rob G? Two episodes a week? That is, that is the plan, yes. Now, you recall The Last Dance was supposed to be released in a similar format, but because of COVID... They decided to bless us and and drop everything Man, all at once. It was like we, we wouldn't have had anything. <laughs> I was, mean, do you remember we were we were, we were struggling? It. No, we're struggling. It was, and you oh, would talk man. about it for like three or four days, and right. it, it would get you through Thursday, and then you'd have to you know come up with something up else because there was nothing like, going let's on. Circle, let's right. circle back to episode two. I know there's meat there that we got to right, get right, right back to. And Michael Jordan couldn't have planned it any better. Right. I mean, I mean, you know God. what I mean? Because right. it was nothing else for people to watch. So in any event, this doc's out. It's a, The first two episodes are out now on Apple TV. But part of the promotion, the trailers, the, the buzz coming into today's debut was the relationship between Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. Obviously, that's all anyone cares about because the first two episodes are about the first Super Bowls. So everyone's very excited, but no one cares about that. They want to know what went wrong, right? right. So as part of the promotion, The Athletic got quotes from some of the later episodes and they discussed why Tom Brady ultimately decided to leave New England. Tom Brady said there was no amount of money basically they could offer him to get him to stay and put up with what he was putting up with. To elaborate, Matthew Slater said, quote, it was brutal, talking about the Brady-Belichick relationship. Rob Gronkowski described not wanting to get out of his car to go to work. That's how much he dreaded going to practice and working under Bill Belichick. And last but not least, this is the shocking one. Wes Welker compared Tom Brady to an abused dog who was continually going back to his owner with the Tom Brady-Bill Belichick relationship. That's only because uh, Tom Brady's nose is wet. That's it. Oh, I'm sorry. That nothing. Right, everything's not nothing. funny. Okay, yeah, that was just that wasn't even. I don't even think people knew if that was a joke. Or not. I was trying to what? process it. Bad what are you was. talking about? <laughs> don't dogs have wet noses? I was processing. It just, it just wasn't funny. Okay. Though. Um, but that's that's Stockholm syndrome is what Wes Welker was describing, Rob. You know, when uh, you go back to your abuser or whatever. But I, Rob, this look, we all knew how tough it was to play in New England. You remember when Philadelphia beat them in the Super Bowl and the Eagles players are talking about how they wouldn't want to play in New England. It's no fun and all of that. But, Rob, to hear these quotes, is um, it, 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 may, it makes me feel like, and we'll see the documentary eventually when it comes out, but it makes me feel like it's worse than we could have imagined. You know, um, because I would think... Obviously, those guys won championships. I mean, tons of them in that Patriot way under Belichick. And usually, Rob, you know this, when you get away from something for a few years, you look back fondly, you know, especially if you had success. Even if it wasn't fun, you look back and you kind of forget or overlook the bad times and the challenges and you just are like, man, it was so we we were winning so much. It was great. And for them to be focused, at least from what we're hearing and what's been reported so far, just about how bad it was, that tells me it must have been incredibly terrible. It's funny. I have the exact opposite uh, opinion. It sounds like they're big crybabies. Oh, my God, they had practice for a couple of hours. My God, he was whipping them with whips and chains, and he was asking them, dude, they, they were succeeding and winning and, and doing, like, putting in work. And now after it's all over, like, it just sounds like 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 a big baby. Like, oh, it was so tough to win and be be held accountable and, and have but a guy who— But are they who, saying that? Are they I mean, saying that, it's because that, we practiced? That's to, but, but a couple that's hours what, a day. That's but, the way you said like, it. Everybody practices a couple hours a day. But but that's it. Just sounds. Did they like, say oh, it because we were being held accountable? I'm just saying, like it doesn't. That's the, my to, point. Every football player is held accountable and practices a few hours a day. No, but they that, can't but, be but, referring but, to but that. But what did he do? Can you give me some? I don't examples? know. That's what I, I'm wondering. It just sounds, <laughs> it just to me sounds like like being a big baby. I'm just telling you because what was he doing? Oh, and Tom Brady was an abused dog. Really. 
when Tom Brady, Brady and him got together, they embraced and they threw flowers at each other and all that. If it was really that bad, now I got to hear a documentary and say everything that they presented and, and told each other how great they admired each other and worked together. Now all that's a lie. Is that, is that what this is? Come on. I, I just don't buy it. Well, that's what I'm wondering. Because I look, I every football player has hard times practicing hard especially back then when you could have two-a-days and you could have padded practices all week and things like that. So that's my point. I, I It can't just be that. And every football player has been yelled at. My guess, Rob, is that it was, I mean, when, especially when you talk about Welker talking about Brady. Yeah, like an it abused dog, like Chris. Just, like, well, what, what did he sounds, do to Tom Brady? It sounds like he spoke to him. In a way that was like just really degrading, and he did. It, it, I'm just, I'm just totally speculating. You no, know, based I, on I what am we're too. Hearing. I mean, right. I, I, I am too. I, but I'm but just. I'm, how I, bad my, could it have been? Well, I don't think it was. I mean, I think the abused dog obviously is a little bit of hyperbole. But I'm right. just saying, like, my guess is that these are grown men, as you know. And that even as Brady emerged as this great player, that Belichick continued to talk to him like he was, you know, a, a, a bench player, you know, just yelling. And we know that that was part of it, right? That people have talked about the fact that Brady would allow Belichick to get on him so hard, put everybody else in line. We heard the same thing with Tim Duncan and, and Greg Popovich. Like, when your star takes coaching, then everybody else has no choice but to get in line. But I don't know, Rob. That's I mean, I'm kind of with you in that I'm wondering what in the world could it have been. Right. I just I'm I don't think it, but I don't I don't buy I'm not buying it was just hard practices. I mean you can go there there's a line, right? Maybe it was they were in, over the line yeah. as far as hard. But they're two a days, man. It happens you know, you get yelled at by your coach. That's you. You learn that as a football. Exactly. player. Exactly. Now, Rob G, so you got any, what, any, de- any more details or help us out here? Yeah. So just to add some context. Now, recall. Please. I don't know if you remember this, guys, but following their 2018 Super Bowl loss to the Eagles, Giselle Bunchin, his ex-wife, yep. told Robert Kraft in a closed door meeting, which was reported by NBC Sports Boston, that it was quote ridiculous that Belichick still treated Brady like quote effing Johnny Foxborough that he wasn't treating him like a guy who had won multiple Super Bowls. I remember that. She also, and, didn't she win the receivers? She, she said, she, if they, they could only yeah, catch the ball. She can't throw and catch the ball. <laughs> but the other thing that she said was she didn't like that uh, Bill Belichick was treating Brady's personal trainer and best friends like outcasts. Okay, well, I, so is, is, well, was well, didn't not Welk, Welk also treatment? test positive, though, for, I mean... Uh, that was when he got rid of them. Don't he, you remember? Yeah, yeah. That's when he pushed them out of there, Chris, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, one thing I do think, Rob, and, and again, this is speculation because we, you know, we don't know. But it just seems like Belichick, and I mean, Glenn, from, this, from the press conferences to this, and I get it, a lot of people say he's funny away from the camera and the reporters and all, and that might very well be true. But from what we see, Rob, it sounds like he he doesn't have great interpersonal skills. He doesn't and, seem like that kind of guy, right? Yeah, you know, and I think he probably only knows one way, and instead of developing some good relationships with guys, because, again, these are adults. These aren't high school or college kids. He just drove them like a drill sergeant, I guess. And for whatever, you know, they must not have had any fun other than the winning, and the winning is fun. Right. And and they're legends because of it. So I'm not crying for him, but I'm just saying it must have been stuff, Rob, that was worse than we we even thought. But maybe not. Maybe, as you said, they are being cryberry. 